Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna talk about modeling graph databases. So I got asked the question, is it possible to model using UML graph databases using the typical symbols, these round symbols here and different variations of lines known as edges in Sparks UML or in UML in general. You don't have to use Sparks to do what we're gonna talk about, so let's get started. So graph databases, which are NoSQL implementations, typically UML is used for modeling SQL data or relational data and software. This is based on the object-oriented development principles. However, NoSQL implementations can be represented by objects and classes among other UML standards. We're going to demonstrate how to model NoSQL graph databases. First, we start with an understanding of what a graph database is, which is a collection of nodes or vertices and edges that connect pairs of nodes. We can mix SQL implementations with NoSQL implementations very easily in Sparks Enterprise Architect or any other UML tool. We can ETL, extract, transform, and load our SQL implementations into column-oriented, doc-oriented, or graph-oriented, and other NoSQL implementations. Now, this is a very simple reference of SQL tables and it could certainly be much more complicated than this. So we may start with simple table references and then build our graph database using class elements and those same table names or any other references that you wish, All right? So our class elements represent our nodes, our associations represent our edges, and we may be representing our properties using association classes. So here we have a blank class diagram. We'll bring in an element that represents a node. We'll bring in another node such as this, and we will draw an edge between these two nodes, right? And then if we want to expose properties, we will draw an association between two nodes and use an association class. So it's really as simple as that to be able to achieve a model that eventually may look something like this. Now we start with a platform independent model or a PIM that has no language technology chosen yet. And we may choose a language and we're gonna use Python in this case as the language of choice for our implementation of this graph database. This eventually moves us from a platform independent model into a DSL or domain specific language model. Then we can go in and bring in attributes relevant to our class elements, depending on what they are, and basically lay out everything that's necessary for accomplishing our graph oriented or relevance between our nodes. As stated earlier, we use association classes to depict our properties. And then we simply, as I showed earlier, draw association between two nodes in order to form an association class. Then we dress the association class with attributes as properties. In UML, we can extend these elements by using things like tagged values. We'll go to tags over here to elicit or expose whether a particular node has been visited or unvisited. And we'll talk more about this in just a moment. The powerful thing about using Sparks to do this is we can bring in linked documents and we can further explain each node to our users for collaboration and design purposes. As we've talked about in this channel, you can use legends based off the extension of tagged values or other metadata to drive particular views. In this particular case, we brought in a legend dealing with visited and unvisited nodes, as well as edges, in the model 
to represent the state of a model or a graph at a, in a particular time frame. We'll go ahead and remove the legend and go back to a generic model. And there are many types of graphs. There are weighted, unweighted. In this particular case, we're showing a weight on this edge. You can do that either using constraints or you can, let's go ahead and open up the properties and go to tags. You can use tag values to assign weight to build particular views that are interesting to your data community. You can collaborate with your various stakeholders, discuss, review, create journals with various stakeholders on any particular node within your graph depiction. And as you've learned in this channel, you can report at the graph level or the node level. In this particular case, we're gonna hit function key eight. Let's just choose model design, which is a custom template. And let's go ahead and generate this. I'm gonna go ahead and step on this particular report that's here. We're gonna hit generate, and then we're going to view the report to look at the outcome. So we've described the node, we've described its attributes, and you can certainly put a lot more details as you've learned, your associations. And in this particular case, we've used tag values. And this tag value says that it was visited and the outcome is the date and time this particular node was visited. So that this view or depiction of the graph database turns into this view of the same elements, the same intelligence for your nodes, your edges, and more. You can stub out your code just as you've learned the channel from these particular class elements and then use that stubbed code to support the development of the particular graph runs, code implementations in real time. So when we're running, whether we're running them at in between particular nodes or other nodes or the complete graph, you're able to depict when nodes are run, when nodes are visited or unvisited, to depict outcomes. You can export your graph design and use them for other collaborations, other implementations as you're moving through. In this particular case, here is the XML for this particular model. You can also publish your diagrams, your models as patterns so that they're reusable from a pattern repository. In this case, we've just created a pattern which then can be reused within the pattern repository in any project. This allows us to go to pattern repository. We have data patterns here. P13N stands for personalization. So we have a personalization graph DB. We want to add it to our model. And there we go. It's bringing it in to our model diagram. And now we have stripped the GUIDs, so it's not the same GUIDs. You could use this over and over to depict different outcomes, different queries, different process runs, and so on. You've learned how to use aliases. So within particular diagrams, you can use aliases if necessary, or you can go to the generic names. You can also bring in legends to represent different views that you want for a particular outcome. So that was modeling NoSQL technologies in UML, such as graph databases, in a nutshell. So this allows us to bring up any view that we want and slice and dice it in our design capabilities as we're going through project delivery. So thanks very much for watching. And until the next episode, Happy modeling.